Take a look again, though, at the 10-year yield dipping now below 1.7%. We've been talking just, uh, just now about uh, how close the 10 and the 2-year are, and Steve Weissman, so many of the other sort of but indicators about what that, the that range, may or may not mean. The range of the 10-year yield this week that we have witnessed, yes. sub 160 to practically 1.8%. I mean, that is... Should yields move tremendous. like that? To your point, though, I mean, that's not normal. And currency shouldn't move the way... I mean, I, mm. when I used to do this for a living back in the 90s and the 80s, currencies moved a couple percent in six months. Right. Now they do it in 10 minutes. There's something inherently wrong with that. And again, equity markets aren't... We're within a whisper of an all-time high in the U.S. equity market, so nobody seems to care. At a certain point... Somebody better start caring because, you know, we talk about currency war or currency crisis. If you want to pick between the two, you better pick the war because at least people think they can control things. In a crisis, they can't. And that's where I think we are. You know, I don't think the market is as complacent as everyone says it is. So, I mean, if you look at the stuff in the S&P that's really expensive and that's lead, it's defensives. It's the most bond-like stocks. So I feel like if you look at the internals of the S&P 500 right now, it's actually pricing in a recession, which we don't think is going right. to happen. So, I mean, I think the market at all-time highs is something that, you know, is, is bandied about and is seen as, as the market being too complacent. But if you look at what's actually risen, it's utilities. <laughs> it's not your classic So, so take that companies. forward and say, does that mean, is that healthy for the broader market? At a, at, at a certain point, when does it give up the ghost there? And quickly, I agree with you there. Maybe the complacency isn't there. But when you yeah. measure complacency in terms of volatility, I mean... Again, in this environment, I think the volatility index should be significantly higher. And one of the many unintended consequences of the Federal Reserve is that they've tamped down volatility. And they've made people feel like, you know what, when volatility gets to a certain level, you sell it with reckless abandon. And that works until it doesn't. And when right. it doesn't, their issues. Sure, I agree. Volatility is unusually low, and it's because of the, the massive amounts of liquidity that have been funneled into equities. But, you know, if you think about it, the market right now is at all-time highs, but the P.E. multiple is not at all-time highs. So I think the big question is earnings. And this quarter doesn't look great, but it doesn't look awful. We've avoided an earnings recession. Going forward, I mean, the, the real driver of economic health, and you tell me what you think of this, but I think how trade uh, is incorporated into corporate spending, consumer confidence, those are going to be the drivers for what we see going forward. And, 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 and we got to go, I know, but Mel asked the other night the question, what do you think CEOs can do in September when they have to budget for things exactly. in the environment they're in? I don't know the answer because I'm not smart enough to be a CEO, but we're going to find out and we're going to find yeah. out really quickly.